Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me in uh, PyCon Epic 2021. So, uh, I want to present you uh, some projects that I have working on last year. So, the title is Reading Indonesia General Election Result Using Python. And my name is Tio Marika, and thank you for PyCon Epic 2021 for having me as one of a uh, country representative speaker from Indonesia and I will try to present this presentation uh, with uh, that's what I can do so uh, something about me so my name is Dima Maharika Dinama or I love to you can call me Dima or Dinama and here is my email and I am graduated from Pence or Polytechnic Electronic Negeri Surabaya in Bachelor Degree on Mechatronics Engineering and at 2020 I'm working at ITB Sireka project as Computer Vision Engineer which the project is gonna be presented here and then about the community I am a initiator and organizer of Bandung Pai uh, one of the regional in Python, Python Indonesia community and I am a lead organizer for PyCon ID 2020 and also the lead organizer for uh, this year's PyCon Indonesia or PyCon ID 2021. You can uh, reach out for me at LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or GitHub using this social media handle at the Maharika. And uh, this is my first talk in regular talks in any PyCon, but in other PyCon, I have given uh, lightning talks at PyCon Indonesia 2019, PyCon India 2020, and PyCon Turkey 2020, and the last time is in PyCon Japan 2021. But this one in PyCon Apex 2021 is my first uh, full regular talks. Okay, and then uh, the contents that I want to present about this project. First, we're gonna have the background about why uh, I need uh, or we need to create this project and then the ideas about the background problems and then we are gonna to how to achieve the ideas and then after we know how to do it, we are gonna implement and some tutorials or some resource so you can also experience it yourself and then we're gonna see the result and the last thing is about uh, the potential update for the next project if there will be another project like this okay let's start with the background so about uh, 2020 indonesia general election or we call it pilkada serentak 2020 in indonesian uh, this, i'll talk it said that general election but it's not fought for presidents in Indonesia because the vote for president is already held in 2019 but in 2020 general election we fought for district head or you can say that we have nine election for governor or province leader and we have 2261 election for mayor or district leader so that's uh, a lot of election actually uh, but not not all of the Indonesia players ha held this election, but only those who have election for their mayor or their uh, governor. And then with the total of three hundred and four thousand two hundred and ninety seven election point, or we call it TPS, uh, with the participation of one hundred and six million voters, uh, Indonesian people. Then, uh, before we talk about 2020 system, we're gonna see about 2019 election count system. So, in 2019, we held uh, in the general elections also, but it's vote for presidents and uh, legislative representation. So, the system uh, simplified is like this we have the voter spots manually uh, on paper and we put it on the box. And after all the voters in each election point done with their voting, we count uh, the officers count the votes on place. So they check each paper and uh, count it, who chose uh, how many votes for 
this one and how many volts for the other ones and then after that they uh they have the form they they come to form and then the form is sent to district coordinator and then from the district coordinator they open again the form and then they manually input it to the system so i text in this place it takes a, a lot of works and a lot of time and we we also have some headline news about how big is the 2019 election and how many problems come because there's a lot a really really lots of works to input the votes because uh, one district there can be about 1000 or uh, more than 100 election points from one district so it takes a lot of work and then after they put it into the system and then the vote is counted to the system so and then uh because it takes a lot of works to uh to manually input the votes the result we have in 2020 we have some ideas so how about we automate the inputs to the system so uh the official is not have to manually input the, so they don't have to manually read the form and then input it to the system like uh, using open the form and then typing the result so we we try to since the election points the vote is already sent to the system so uh when the officer in election points have done count the result uh they check a picture and then the system can read the vote result and then uh, it's sent to the system while the hard copy or the hard file of the vote result is sent to this to the district coordinator and then uh district officers is only validates the vote so they have the hard file and they can see the to the system it, they just need to see oh it's good just checklist so they don't have to manually input it again so and then after the district officer validates it the vote is counted to the system so uh, another idea is about we gonna use python to read the vote result from the form so first we have the form and then we use computer vision based on python to read the result into a digital uh value because the form is image value which uh is not they they don't have digital result so we need a computer vision to read the image and interpret what the result inside the form so officer just need to take the photo i mean uh, after they count in the place they have this form they just need to take a photo with their phone uh, and then send the photo to the servers and servers gonna read the form using python to read the numbers and from the form and then send the result to uh, the system i mean inside the servers the system inside the servers so why we are gonna use python i mean there's a lot of uh, other language programming language to do it but why we use python the first is it's free and open source so you can use it for individually or you can use it for uh, enterprise level or national level it's all right and python is all have high capabilities for computer vision and then there's a lot of frameworks and libraries that can help to achieve these goals uh you can say like tensorflow pythors opencv pandas or everything there's a lot of thing in python and we also have a lot of resource i mean by resource is reference or tutorial so uh you don't you don't be afraid to use python because you can learn it just by googling it and you can try it yourself and the last is it's flexible fast and easy to use uh Python is not slow, it, it's best for having this high and complex competition uh, using this computer vision project. And then we need uh, to know how we read the numbers using Python. So imagine there's an uh, image having this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 as an image. So we need to convert this as a digital result or 
as number and you can have it in JSON or you can have it in txt or anything so there's a lot of option to do this in Python uh, you can use an existing uh, OCR libraries like Tesseract or Easy OCR so uh, this libraries is very very good and very very powerful or we can create our own machine learning techniques by using a lot of options like decision tree k nearest neighbor support vector machines artificial neural network or convolutional neural network so we can use existing libraries or we can uh, make our own network by a lot of machine learning options because in python it's very very big you you have a lot of option to do something but uh, we need to look for what do we need so what we need is we only need single purpose algorithm like we don't need uh, OCR that can read alphabets we only need OCR that uh, need to read numbers only and then uh, we need it to like wait so because it's a single purpose so we need it just to do one job so it has to be uh, like wait the, it, it cannot be to have a lot of memory a lot of storage just to install the libraries and then we we have controllable environment I mean uh, we have the same form from all of uh, in election point they have the same form so uh, when the, to check the photo we also have the controllable environment so they have to have a good lightning they need to be so clear to take the photo they have a minimum megapixel size for the image so it's controllable and then we need a high precision because there's a lot of numbers and there's a lot of election points there's a lot of forms so we need a very high precision and we need it to be so fast we need to be fast performance so we need to like wake high precision fast performance and then because of that we choose to use convolutional neural network so it looks like this so we have this image of numbers and then we have convolution uh, this is just an illustration of our model so it's not our real model looking like this so we are using convolution and then we need uh, we are creating max pooling and then we need we are using another convolution so so the input is this image and the output is uh, one of this classification between 0 until 9. So the reason we use Convolution on your network is it has a lot of example like when you googling about Convolution on your network there's a lot of resource there's a lot of tutorials so we don't need to learn or we don't need to create it from a uh, basic we can just do the example and it's easy to use so we just need like this image and then we get the classification result it's also high precision like our model get more than 99 percent accuracy and it, it's fast because conventional network uh there's a lot of CNN and model that are fast and like so about uh, how how can we read the handwritten number from the form so we have our goals so we have image of numbers and then we want to read those numbers into the numbers value like uh, this is the digital representation of the image of the numbers so we want to send this to the system but before we we can read these numbers first we need to know how to get the numbers first so this is the form that we use so I've censored this because it has a uh, classified information and uh, because this is the form so I'm just to show you about how the numbers location form so how do we get the numbers and convert from this form how can we get this uh, individual numbers like this one X five seven nine so how, how can we get this number so the yeah the easiest thing to get the number is we have to crop the image first and to controllable image so we have defined our 
target image so we need to how no matter how the officers take a photo of the form we gonna convert this photo into this kind of image and then from this kind of image we can just get the numbers easily so we can just slice it or we can just take uh, the box of this it's get more it, it's more easier to do it so we have the two steps here so from the form we crop it and then from the cropped image we get the box of numbers so the implementation of the thinking the design so we know what to do now we're gonna do it with the help of libraries and tutorials from the internet this is what uh, very good from python because there's a lot of libraries and tutorials you don't have to worry when you want to do something it's open the internet you can't find anything about python and a lot of your problems gonna be solved so we have some libraries used here the first one is opencv or open computer vision for the image processing we have a uh, numpy for the number processing because uh opencv is also based by on numpy and we use pytorch for the convolutional neural networks uh, platform we use we use PyTorch for the deep learning frameworks, so we create our CNN models on PyTorch. Why we use PyTorch towards the TensorFlow? Because at the moment, uh, when we use it and we when we try, PyTorch is easier to use than TensorFlow. And then we use Kafka Python to send or uh, to receive and send the data with other API because, uh the system is not written in python so we need to search for api that can have cross language cross programming language so and then we choose python so and then we choose kafka to have python interact with other programming language and we also use other python built-in libraries such as request or url lib or dictionary and other things and so for the steps by steps here the tutorials are gonna be displayed on each step so i mean the tutorials like where the where i learn or where are the links that i used to learn about how i'm gonna do it so first we need to crop the number section from the form so our goal is to create this form into this corporate section so how we're gonna do that first we can use the marks to crop the section so we have this mark here uh, it's it's a very simple mark but it's scalable like when you scale it's always looking for the centers of this and then how we can get this mark we can use template matching so our resource for template matching you can see this at this opencp website or this by imagesearch.com it's this tool is very good for you to learn about template matching and then so uh we need to get the location mark so by using template matching uh we can we first threshold our we first convert our pictures into black and image so our marks can be more precise and then after that we can have the location of our template here so we, we have each center of our template we have location of centers which uh, 0 0.9 Seven means uh, the accuracy or the confidence score of the template is uh, the, the score for the template match and then after that since we have this location we know the, where the points are so we we put text in here so we know where where the points are so we can crop the image into this so we have these four points here and then we're gonna use the four points in here 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 and here and then how how can we crop the image this is used to restore the location of the marks first so we have four marks here one two three four we start the location where where the location is and then we can use perfect perspective transformations so we are gonna use this edge of the mark location as each of the edge of the picture so we can get from this form 
by using template matching and perspective transformation we can get this beautiful cropped form crop form and then after that so we have the crop form and we need to get the number image so how can we get from this uh, list of number image into individual number of image so this image is only contain the number six while this image is contain a lot of numbers so how can we extract of this each box so the very first uh, option and the easiest to use is we can just sizing so we know uh, because all of the image will be looking like this and they have uh, the same dimension the same specification so we can just slice so we, we search this box is having uh, x and y coordinate and how many width how many height just crop it then it's it's very easy to use but uh, we have it's predictable fast and easy but uh, you know like like uh, uh, one of the snack in one of snack in Indonesia have something called life is never flat so it, it's not always this beautiful there there's gonna be some problem like the the paper is like uh, having a wavy a wavy paper or there's gonna be a lot of things happen so it's not always strike ahead so there can be a curve here or there's another thing uh, there's another condition that happens in uh, in the field so the so we use and uh, we choose to use counter detection to counter detection is used so we we are gonna detect the border of each box so it's not uh, just slicing but we gonna detect first where the box is by uh, using counter detection algorithm and the research about counter detection you can use learnopencp.com or you can use the uh, docs documentation of OpenCV. The this tool resource is get as a best way to learn about contract detection and how the contract detection works is the simple thing is like this. So the con uh we use contract detection to extract box numbers. So the first thing we want to uh use inverse threshold and edge morph for this image. So the result image is gonna be like this. So uh, we remove the big lines here. So it's not gonna be detected as contours. And then we're gonna have this beautiful box here. So so we can see this box. So after that, we can get the rectangle size of each contours detected and we can filter it, which uh, we know how how much the width of each box is so we're gonna compare it so it's not gonna be more bigger or more uh, smaller it, it has to be around the threshold of the size so after that we can get this uh, each box we can export the information the x and y location and also the width and the height location for each concert detected and after we get this control detected so we get rectangle for each colors we get the information like x location y location the width and the height and then we use slicing for the undetected contours like uh maybe this one we, we it doesn't look very good with the x or there's another like, like this one it's not very good also so we use slicing and then here's the result so the green one is we we are getting it from contour detection while the red one is we are using manual slicing so we get uh, we slice it hard code not based on contour detection so we have a lot of contour detection that get to detect the box and for the others that it's not very good like like this one we are using uh, manual slicing so we have predefined location for each of the box but we want to use the contours first because if you if you see here 
uh, the contours is very very perfect to get the box uh, while the hard code they have some offset here some offset here some offset so there's a lot of uh, offset for the manual slicing but the counter we can we can get like like this one it's it's very broken so it, it cannot detect it as a good counter so we are gonna use the slicing then after we get this rectangle so when when i uh draw rectangle here i need information like x and y location uh the width information and the height information when i know those information it means i can also extract the image to get the numbers so so if we can draw this uh green and red box it means we can get this information we can use this information to get the each individual numbers and then after that what else so after we get those box of image of numbers it's the deep learning time so we have this individual image number we're gonna convert it into the numbers that the system can read so this is where the deep learning works so we use deep learning to create image classification so we we feed this number into our neural network so it's gonna get a digital number and to do this there are a lot there are a lot of tutorials in the internet i'm just gonna say some tutorials about using PySearch as a convolutional neural network you can find it in medium or you can find it in kaggle or you can find it in other blog posts so there is a lot of results so you, you don't have to worry about this just uh you just check on their tutorial first and then you're gonna know uh which one is suitable best for you and then you can modify it a little or a lot that gonna be have uh get your goals and then some deep learning tips for me so uh because we are uh the number base for this deep learning so just start with mnist data set so mnist data set is like uh the mother of all data set because it's it's like the first data set that use convolutional neural network from yan li kong so just type mnist data set you're gonna get it for free it contains about uh 80,000 images of numbers so start with your MNIST data set create your uh, neural conversion on your network and then you try to uh, have a good accuracy with that and then you need to explore more the model like add more layers uh, or, or add more conversion or anything you can just explore for the model you're gonna have a good model then so and be sure to keep it simple and fast so you don't need to have a lot of layers so just uh simple not not more than 10 layer is enough to to do this kind of simple classification and then uh if you can you can gather our more than data set so when you can read the form i mean you can extract the box number from the form it means you can store those individual numbers as your new data set so i'm able to create up more than 500,000 image data sets for then which i can use to uh train again and then for this data set you you don't have to uh, sometimes you can just fit this image data to the model or sometimes it's better to do some prop pre-processing for the number image the pre-processing that i mean is like we can just remove this uh black border here and then we can enhance the like the contrast like this four here is it's not very contrast so we can like en enhance it to make it brighter the background and darker the the marker so the number is gonna be more dark and the background is gonna be more bright or you can do it in inverse or the, the number gonna be in white while the background is gonna be in black so 
try some pre-processing you you need to explore it yourself you have uh, a lot of time take your time to learn more about your model you take your time to uh, explore about your process uh, your processing numbers and then the another tip is to train test evaluate don't get be bored by training and training you you go, you're gonna get a lot of model and you're gonna test for each of the model and you have to evaluate it and then try and test evaluate just just repeat this step and you're gonna get what you need so when you say i'm enough with this level of accuracy then uh you can just stop and then go on to the others uh target so about the implementation is we're gonna send the result to python uh, we're gonna send the result to main system using python kafka so why we use python kafka at all the first is because our main system is written in java but the fusion engine is written in python so we need so we're gonna use Python Kafka to communicate with Java language using Kafka API. So uh, we get the image information like image file location, which image that we need to read, the image details like uh, the TP, the election points numbers or the how many numbers that we need to read in there. And then we also send the image result, the result number. So uh, what number is in this form and which which number is gonna be in which section we send us uh, data using JSON via Kafka API so the JSON is gonna let Java J JSON can be read in Python and also can be read in Java and we send and receive the message using Kafka API so the resource about the Kafka API you can see in this uh, toward data science blog uh, this one is very good for you to learn about uh apache kafka in python in which i also use this one so the result of this ids or this project so this fusion engine can read the election form so we have this election form and then we read the numbers into like to be like this so this one five one one two seven one two seven eight zero zero one zero zero three zero zero four and others are there's this is safe one and this is uh there's wrong uh the read here but don't worry if it's wrong because the district officer is gonna validate it and make sure it's right so so district officer doesn't have to manually input this 102 numbers they just have to look at uh which result is true and which is wrong and the wrong one is gonna be resulted manually so from this 102 numbers they have just to manually input two numbers so it's faster less workload for officers so uh, it's a very good outcome for us and some key takeaways from our project here so what can we learn from this project then so we can use python to load election form so we know that python can use cnn to read the image number but we are applying the cnn to read the election form in indonesian general election and then by using computer to read the form we give less workload for the officers and it means it less human error and we still need some pre-processing and adjustment before we feed the image into our deep learning model i mean after we crop this number to here we still have to pre-process it so it it gets better result than before and then the last thing is internet is full of resource so if you can use it wisely you can create a lot of things like uh, this project is really based on a lot of tutorial we just combine this tutorial and those tutorials we just combine it and then we can achieve our goals and then the last is about potential update from this project so what when what can we optimize from this project for the next project if there's gonna be not uh, there's gonna be similar things happens in the next years so this current vision engine is running on server side so uh, the officer have to check a photo from the election point they send it to the server and then the server send the result back to their phone and then they validate in their phone so next thing we can do is we have to read the, the capabilities for 
reading the image is on the client side so everything you don't have to send the image to the server first you can uh, use mobile apps to read the image and then just send the result to the server and then uh, we can explore for more lighter and faster network model and then uh, we can search for more simplified uh, pre-processing for the form image because like uh, the form image take a lot of steps to have this cropped image so we can search for more pre-processing with more simple I think that's all for from me so this is what can we do for the next projects or what can you do if you want to try to uh, recreate our my work here and you can do it better I, I believe you can do it better than me and then uh, before I say goodbye I have some sponsored message not not from sponsored company but uh, as a lead of PyCon Indonesia 2021 we have a big chance to talk in PyCon APEC 2021 I want to inform you that PyCon Indonesia is gonna be held in 4 and 5th December this year or about two weeks after PyCon APEC and special for you PyCon APEC attendees you can have 50% of for regular ticket our regular ticket is uh chips already but if you, you can use this 50 percent uh promo code on the checkout so we're looking forward for you in PyCon indonesia so we hope i hope we can meet again in PyCon indonesia 2021 in december so that's all for me thank you so much for you who watch this sessions um that's all for me, Dima Marika Dinama. Thank you for PyCon Epic for letting me to be a uh, speaker in this PyCon, my first tech -tech conference in international PyCon. So thank you so much for your attention. Goodbye. Good afternoon, Dima. It's a pleasure to meet um, you. Thank you again for your time for the really informative talk in exploring the way we can uh, leverage Python and to demensify general election results in, in Indonesia and the benefits of using Python. Um, in your talk, yeah. uh, you spoke about the different use cases, you know, uh, in your project and how Python can be really flexible, a language that is fast, friendly, uh, and with many open libraries to explore for, for newbies like me especially. Um, so I wanted to ask a couple of questions uh, first to get things started and move this ball rolling. Um, what were the, what's the inspiration and also what are some of the key findings or setbacks when you were exploring the framework or the different libraries to use uh, and get that kind of integrity in election results? Okay, the, I think the key findings about my project here is the everything is move faster because CNN as reading numbers is not a new technology, you know. Yan Li Kang has done it since 1998, but it started to adapting uh, about five or about five years ago. It started booming to use uh, machine learning, CNN, and other things in Indonesia. So the main thing about this project is to say to search for frameworks that that are very easy easy to use but it's powerful in now so we, we know that there are two main framework in using neural network the first one is PyTorch and the other one is TensorFlow or uh, and then there's other t other frameworks that can be used too but when we when we talk about the simplicity because we know that our network is not that large it's not that heavy so we start to look for the uh, for the most like weight framework first and then but we cannot uh, write our own convolutional network from scratch because it's gonna be uh, it's not only hard to implement but it's gonna take a lot of time to to write to write the uh, networks instead of trying to to test the network and then to make it better so we choose by by torch first for the uh, for the neural network framework so that's the first thing and then the next one is why we use Python instead of other language mm -hmm. uh, the first thing is because it's open source and then it's so easy to use and then the second thing is that I am the one who chose to 
work on the project because other than me they are using java language for for the main system and then they are using java language for the android system but only python is using in computer vision because we all know that even though we can try to make java uh, working on reading the numbers but it's not gonna be as simple as python it's not gonna be as good as python so that's why we choose python and pytorch for our frameworks got it got it so extremely portable we're looking at some api stuff in there as well right yeah, yeah that's it's yeah. very it's very easy to have a good resource and because for us programmers it's not only about how we good at doing stuff but it's also how good we search about how to do stuff yeah no use reinventing <laughs> the wheel right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's why that's why we chose it Awesome, awesome. So accuracy being one of the major factors in delivering great outcomes and value outcome or maximizing that. When we're looking into like convolutional neural networks, what were some of the early steps to ensure to get that accuracy or cl close proximity that you can get for your outcomes? Okay, the first thing we try to do is, uh, of course, the first thing is we, we have to make sure that our convolutional neural, neural network is going to work. So we are not uh, having a good database first. We only use MNIST because mm -hmm. MNIST is available widely and it's free. And it's the, really the first thing that uh, our, a lot of tutorials try in MNIST. Because, so, it's, so it's very easy for us to use it. And then the next thing is uh, we try our network on MNIST first and then we try to uh, to make it more accurate, we try to change some net network here, some change some network there, and then uh, the next thing is we we are testing it on uh, on the real on uh, uh, real world application. So uh, we take a lot of photo, and then we also have a simulation that have around I think it's more than hundred or two hundred people taking a photo, and then each people they take uh one until five photo each so you can you can multiply it there are 200 people taking five photo it means there are 1000 uh, photos and then in each photo there are, are about 100 numbers so we get 100 numbers uh as our next database uh, it's, it's not that hard it's also it's not that hard to uh to label the database uh, i mean the data sets because we ask them to only uh, write one numbers in each photo, so we can just grab the the photos and then we automatically assign it without any read or any other uh, problems. So that's the second thing is we we need to have a lot of data sets or a lot of data train to make sure the accuracy is gonna be as high as possible. Got it, got it. And for a, for like, let's say a developer that is trying to dabble into the experimentation or proof of concept phase, let's say they're, they're doing it by themselves and they don't have access to, to uh, you know, the, the, the data sets of, of real life scenarios. Are you advising to go kind of backwards into, you know, finding historical public data that they can do in their experiments? Is that a good approach to doing a, a test like this? Uh, I, I think it's, it's a good approach to do that because uh, testing uh, the key to have a good model in uh, neural network is a lot of testing. You, you, you need to take a lot of tests on it. And until you're sure that it's going to be as good as in real, in real life world. Got it, got it. And when we talk about humans you know uh, that is the most unpredictable uh, kind of variable in a lot of uh, how we learn as machines right um, what often happens is that there is you know can be insufficient input like dirty data uh, voting inputs from people um, what kind of exceptions or handlings do you recommend in order to to kind of demensify that part of the era uh, Actually, we we are we are not really thinking about the problem. We do it. The it's not very smart, but it's fast. So, I uh, it the also our accuracy is until ninety nine percent. 
there it, there is still there's all a, there's a possibility that it's get it's gonna be wrong right and then uh, there's also uh, some possibility that the people first write the number and then it's wrong they uh, they change the number and then it's gonna be unreadable so mm-hmm. we know that our uh, our our model is gonna uh, have a wrong suggestion on that number so we have another backup so the official is not gonna input the number but they gonna flag it as it's not uh it, it's wrong they're gonna flag it as the computer result is wrong so from the let's say 100,000 there's gonna be about 500 that's wrong but we can make sure that the the last 99,000 is gonna be right so you don't have to check it anymore but you you just need to check this 500 that's it uh so it's all right if we're wrong we just gonna check uh, another backup plan if it's gonna be wrong Got it, got it. And um, I loved the quotation that you had in your in your talk that life is never flat. So yeah, the, right, right, right. <laughs> the testing and learning methods for training your model. Um, you know, as a as a product owner, I'm I'm always kind of pushing people for. Well, I'm a bit of a pusher. I'm always nudging my engineers to test, test and learn, test and learn. Do it, do it, do it, so that we can get the quality aspect up there. Can I ask you, um, within this experiment, within this project, typically, how many rounds of learning did you have to do to get the vision engine to read the election form in the format that you wanted? I more than fifty times. I, I mean, uh. I, I, it's more than fifty times that I I change the model and like <laughs> I do it so so you know in machine learning that in especially in conference in general work you know there there's gonna be a lot of uh, training session. I believe that I made yeah. more than fifty training session, which each session is gonna be less about one hour or one, or two hours. I believe I made more than fifty. Uh, oh fifty my times gosh. that I know the model and then. Also the form, so we try to make the form is fair, uh, easy to use for the uh, for the people, but it's also gonna be easy for us to uh, read it. So we, I think we got the form for the final result is on the version 10 or 12. I think we got we make a lot of change in the form, so the, so it's it's very a long work because we have a lot uh, like three three until five points to work on it so we're gonna really check uh, we we have a really good communication with the designer of the form designer so we, we say we need this so <laughs> it's gonna be good for our computer and then he said no it's not possible to add this in here because blah 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 <laughs> and then yeah we, we try to get another result Finally, that's amazing that more than 10 percent Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the it's that's the game of actually. software, right? That's the game of analysis. Yeah, you know? that's right. Iteration, that's right. iterate, 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 and improve. And I <laughs> admire your tenacity. And I just wanted to see if there were any questions before we wrap up this session. And thank you so much for the amazing talk. Let's take a look at our audience and check out to see if we've got some questions here for you, Dima. Uh, Oh, in case you don't know how to ask questions, you can just chat, uh, put it in our live chat, uh, which is located in the right-hand panel of the box, or you could simply hand up your, put your hand up in in your emoji, I think avatar. Just give it a few minutes. And let our spectators decide. Saru, how, how are we looking? Have we got any questions from the crowd? No, not yet. Okay, no worries. So we'll probably have to wrap this up. Um, so Dima, to conclude, you know, thank you so much for uh, walking us through the use cases. I have a lot of ideas now in my head, and I'm definitely going to not sleep at night now because I'm going to think about them and think about all the different ways I could possibly apply this to some of our my engineers as well. Um, tell us a little bit more about PyCon Indonesia, that's coming up in December 2021. Yeah, uh, for everyone, you know that uh, Indonesia is also have its annual uh, PyCon since, I believe it's since 2017, and then for the last mm-hmm. two years, in 20, and this year we have it online. And when when we gonna take, uh, when we are searching for the schedule, 
uh, we are looking for the other icon uh, when it's gonna be held and then we are looking at the most possible ways uh, because if it's earlier than uh, this it's gonna uh, there's spike and epic in uh, last November and then in the in the last October there are spike in Japan and then there's another spike so we are mm-hmm. we are choosing in December as I think it's gonna be the last spike in the world so uh, it's gonna be like <laughs> 50% of its stock is going to be in Indonesia but don't worry the the last the, the rest of 15 50% is going to be held in English we also had uh, Sebastian Ramirez who oh. the creator of Fast API as our keynote speaker so and awesome. then the last time Mariata Mariata Wijaya is also one of our speaker uh, one of our keynote speaker which is being our keynote speaker here right now so mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that Python Indonesia is not that expensive. So if you if you are interested, you can have uh, our discount code. Uh, with Python Pack 50, you get 50% regular discount. Thanks uh, to Python communities and also thanks to PSF. We are uh, we can afford more uh, sub- to subsidize our uh, attendees because our main Python Indonesia is not about. Uh, having a good money or having a good income, but have uh, how to spread the Python uh, into Python community all around the world. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for your contribution to the PyCon community. Folks, to get in touch with Dima, go to D-M-A-H-A-R-I-K-A at python.or.id and you can email him then. And see you uh, next time at PyCon Indonesia. Terima kasih, Dima. Thank Ketemu you, lagi, ya. sama Ya, yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Let's meet nice to meet you too. Session. I believe next year is gonna be a lot of offline Python, so I'm waiting for you guys. Bisa, bisa. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye bye everybody. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you.